Welcome back guys. Uh, this week I'm going to do a short video on the C6 Corvette and how to do a return style fuel system. Um, those of you who are curious, this car and most Corvettes, if not all of them, do not come with a return style uh, fuel system like some of the turbo cars. Instead, they use a um, a one-way system basically when the fuel pump pumps from the driver's side of the Corvette it goes through the fuel lines and into the primary side which I'm sorry not the primary side the driver's side of the fuel rail and that is crossed over with another little pipe that goes to the passenger side feeding both rails and then there's a mechanism inside the driver's side and the passenger side fuel tank which basically allows the fuel to flow back or does not and when it does not it increases the pressure and this is works great but you know eventually when you're making big power you want fuel control especially running boost you want a return style fuel system and this is a short video on how to do that or how I did it so the fuel system I'm still using the stock injectors now to break in the clutch um, but the fuel system I got these these are inexpensive uh, at the time because I am literally going to keep the stock manifold. Once I upgrade the manifold and everything down the road, I'm going to upgrade these as well. But these work well. I have a 6A in feed. So on this side, the stock side, as you can see, I just use a quick connect fitting. And I got 6A in running to the rail. This is the bridge. This is the bridge. And... From here, I have the other, um, the return going to this external fuel pressure, which currently I'm just using uh, 60 PSI base. I don't have a vacuum line attached to it, but I eventually will do once I go supercharger. And then these two relays with these two um, uh, fuse holders connect to, as I just tapped it here, um, to the two pumps that I have running. And um, they are, one is 450 in the tank, the other one is a, one is 450, the other one is a Bosch uh, 44. And because, as you guys know, there's a lot of issues with these where the connection isn't good for the switch uh, to trigger the relay, I, for, I forewent that and I basically added two fuel switches. This I would not recommend for somebody who's daily driving because you might forget it happened to me a couple of times and it just the pumps were running it just died after an hour or so. Uh, but I got used to it now. I don't forget. But this is not going to be street driven at all. So I really don't care. Um, and that's basically bad. That's it. And I added some some gauges that I know I'm going to need. I chose to go with um, AEM instead of the some people just do uh, the single gauge with two readings for a right and left bank I have them separated it's before the X pipe so the reading is exactly from the right and left bank and the reason why with AEM I like the look that's one and AEM heats up a lot faster I hate when innovative basically just me just waiting for every little thing uh, and it's heating up. I hate that. And uh, I got a boost gauge. It's not hooked up yet. I mean, it's hooked up, but I haven't attached the vacuum lines yet. But that's basically it. So this is my passenger side tank. This is the siphon tank. Uh, what I've done is I actually did a bulkhead fitting that is uh, fuel resistant RTV. I mean, I have a bulkhead, I don't really need it, but I just put it for extra security. Um, we got a 6AN feed that goes all the way down there and into uh, this pump. This is a inline, I left the room for another pump there, inline Walbro, for, I'm sorry, Bosch 44 that's remotely controlled is inside the cabin. I got rid of the whole, uh, the cross member, the cross pipe that whole siphon deal this car is not going to be daily driven so i don't really care i just turn a switch on and it just pumps all the fuel from here to there so the gauges actually work still um and on this side i have two fittings on top 
for the one for the return and one from the return from the uh, fuel rail the other from this side also hard hardwired everything using hella relays and i actually added a switch and i'll tell you why in a little bit uh and we have the 6a and feed uh using the stock line going to the rail i decided to place this on the hanger the 6a n uh, bulkhead fitting because some of these cars actually have a leaky or cracked um, feed on top and which many of you can attest to because it smells like fuel every time you fuel up or or whatnot installing the wall 450 wasn't that difficult uh, it just fits in you just have to trim a little bit but pretty solid but in order for the external fuel pressure regulator to work there's some modifications that you need to make to the stock hanger on both side of the tank both passenger and driver in the hanger there exists this circle uh, item what you're seeing is the blue one is not OEM that's what I bought online this is basically a blocker a fuel pressure regulator blocker you have to get rid of this one and the other one on the passenger side and replace them with the blocker otherwise your external fuel pressure regulator will not work at the end of the day this is my fuel system um, so basically the driver side tank pumps which is the red one the red line flows the fuel into the driver side rail from the driver side rail it goes to the passenger side rail from the passenger side rail it whatever fuel is left over goes to the fuel pressure regulator and from the fuel pressure regulator it goes back into the driver side tank in order for me to get the fuel from the passenger side tank I have a pump in between whenever I need it I see you know the fuel going low I just pump everything through it's not practical for somebody who's daily driving there are other ways to do it I could have the pump turn on automatically because it is a resistance base gauge but I don't want to do all that it's a simple wiring but I don't want to do all that uh, and I hate the Corvette, the C6 Corvette siphoning system. Once you take that out, it's difficult to put it in. You know, it's just the O-rings. There's a lot of fuel issues. So I, this is the this is the system that I decided to do. Um, and let me show you basically how I start the car. It's pretty simple. All right. So to basically uh, start the car, just one extra procedure with having all this stuff. That is the fuel pressure gauge. Um, I've added that so i could monitor everything so to start it i usually one click all the gauges go on and i do my primary pump and you see the pressure going up and then i start the car and i kept the pressure at close to stock which is around 60 59 psi because I'm not tuning this car yet. I made slight adjustments to tune because, uh, you know, just had to with the, with the headers. Uh, I think I added like five to 10% at different places just to keep the AFRs running cool. So as you can see, I can see the boost gauge is not hooked up as I mentioned before. But yeah, and to turn it off, I turn the car off first and I just turn this off and that's it. Um, in order for you to run an external fuel pressure regulator, you, you have to get rid of those little uh, stock pressure regulators that are inside your basket in the tank on both sides. And there's a replacement uh, stopper for it that you can buy um, and just, just replace them and then you can run a stock aftermarket fuel pressure. But just in case, I also added a uh, tuning adjustment so it doesn't look for that 60 PSI and throws a code for the fuel pressure being messed up so i just lowered it to like 40 psi and it's not gonna throw code either way um that's basically it thank you guys for watching uh, we got a lot of good things coming stay tuned don't forget to subscribe and please please be kind to each other